everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Take a look at what we're going to be creating. Pretty cool, right? We're going to create that polka dot lipstick effect in Photoshop. It's actually, it's difficult to figure out, but once you have it figured out, it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, so we're going to take a look at doing that. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, two things I would ask you to do. Number one, subscribe to the channel so you never miss any video tutorials in the future. You kind of join our little family, if you will. And if you really love the tutorial, hey, consider supporting the channel. Pick up a copy of my course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. A little link will appear up in the corner there. It's like a white circle with an eye in it. Follow that link and you can pick up a copy of that course for yourself and really support what we do here at tutvid.com. All right, let's jump in and check out this tutorial. So here's the finished effect. Uh, and we're gonna begin with these lips here. Now this is just a stock photo, macro image of some lips. You can do this with a straight on portrait. I'm just going with a big, huge image because we'll really be able to focus on the detail. Uh, but if we can make it look great on a big image like this, Hey, applying it as a smaller pattern to just part of your image is going to be that much easier. So what do we do first? Well, we're going to apply a hue saturation adjustment layer, that layer right there. And it's going to apply this hue saturation layer. We are going to tick on colorize and I'm going to boost saturation way up. And I think like lips are almost reddish pinkish anyway. I think I'm going to go with something crazy, maybe like a blue, just to make sure I'm getting all the coverage that I need. And then we will adjust the color and, and hue and saturation lightness, all that junk later. What I'm focused on here is this thing right here, the layer mask. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to go image adjustments and I'm going to choose invert. The hotkey is command or control I and it's going to invert the colors. Now the color here is only white, the opposite of which is black. And when a mask is filled with black, it hides the entirety of that layer. And what we want to do now is use our brush tool, this guy right over here. And I've got a 100 pixel soft edge brush. If you right click, you can adjust the size and the hardness. 100 pixel, eh, maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll go 200 pixels. A soft edge, that'll be great. And we're painting here with our foreground color set to white. And we'll remember our mask is black. So when we paint with white, it's going to reveal that blue uh, over the lips. So the idea here is going to be, we're going to paint in just over the lips. So I'm going to go over it. I'm not going to get too super close to the edges. I'll come back and edge everything in in just a moment. Uh, but you know, just you'll, you'll go over the lips. And the reason I'm using blue again is just so we can really make sure we get proper coverage here with this coloring. And we're really going to make this look realistic in just a little bit. So I may be speeding the video up here as I'm talking, uh, but we're going to get all this taken care of nice and quickly. Um, and uh, it's going to look good. And by the way, as I am, as I'm going through and doing this, you may see the, the entire screen rotating. When you see that, I, all I'm doing is I'm pressing and holding the letter R, and that temporarily gives me my rotate view tool, which is going to allow me to rotate my entire image sort of temporarily so I can brush kind of, you know, in a way that's more natural for my hand. I'm using a, a Wacom tablet here so I can I can really set myself up to, to brush in as natural a position as possible and therefore just brush really fast and really effectively and get beautiful edges and beautiful lines and everything will just generally look you know, really good. All right, great. Now, once you have kind of a, a good selection, uh, we're going to go back to our rotate tool. Just hit the letter R and we're going to hit the reset view button, which will bring us back to the way our image was uh, originally. And now just to make sure that I've got full coverage, I'm going to hold down my alter option key and I'm going to click right on the layer mask. And you can see there's some areas that I missed. So I'm going to take my brush tool uh, and we're painting with white again. And I'm just going to make sure I paint over those areas just to make sure we have absolute full coverage everywhere that we need it. And we have a, a decent selection of the lips. So I'm going to hold down alter option and click that layer mask icon again out there. And you can see we've got blue lips actually look, you know, pretty decent, but we're going to make them look so much better. So what we need to do here is click on our hue saturation layer. We'll double click on it. I'm sorry to open up the properties panel. And we want to set our hue to a pretty, a, a red or a pink. I'm going to go with more of a red. So I'm going to go like 355, 356 looks good. A saturation of 100 is good. And we can play with the colorizing. I think darker is going to look better. I'm going to push it really dark. I'm going to go like negative 50 on the lightness scale. See, that's super duper dark. Um, not my favorite color in real life, but then again, I don't wear lipstick. So uh, who am I to, to make that judgment call? Um, and now that I make this really dark, you can see there's some areas in here that kind of could use a little touching up. So we'll grab the brush tool again. I'm going to make sure I select the layer mask over here, painting with white, make my brush tool a little bit smaller using the little square bracket keys. And I'm just going to paint right in there and just fill in a little bit, uh, fill in a little bit of those lighter areas. Kind of like so. There we go. And then down here at the bottom of the lip as well. It's just a little bit too faded. There we go. Just brush that right in. 
And of course, if you overbrush, just hit the letter X to flip your foreground and background colors and paint with black a little bit and back that color off of wherever it needs to be backed off of. And uh, it'll look just just fine. All right, there we go. That's good enough. There, in, in there on those parts of the lips, I don't think that's going to matter too much because we're going to begin blending this. And we're going to begin by using our blending options. And those are up here under layer, layer style, blending options. Now here under blending options, I'm most interested in these blend if sliders. Have you ever used these things? They're super powerful if used correctly. Uh, you can do a lot of cool things with them. I'm going to focus on the underlying layer and I'm going to drag the white point over. Basically what we're going to tell Photoshop in, in absolute layman's terms is, hey, look, areas that are super bright on the underlying layer, which is the original lips layer, I kind of let those areas shine through. So what I'm going to, the, the idea is to get the highlights of the original lip to show through because the lip color looks super flat right now. So I'm just going to drag this over to maybe like, I don't know, 225 ish. See, I'm starting to see the highlights poking through, but they're like super sharp edged and they don't look very good. So I'm going to hold down my alt or option key and click right on that little handle and it's going to split it. See how it's split? We're going to take the split end now and we're going to drag it over to kind of blend those colors. So drag it to about 185 or so. And I can use the preview option up here, before and after. Look at how much more realistic that alone makes this effect look. Pretty stinking amazing. There's before, there's after. Look at that. And I have to say, nitpicking, you can still definitely see that edge, but we're not gonna spend any more time on the mask. This down here could look a little bit better as well. But again, we're not gonna spend more time on the mask. Let's talk about creating the white polka dot shapes. This is all gonna begin with a black and white adjustment layer. So we're gonna click on this little black and white icon. It's gonna add a black and white layer. And we're going to boost the reds. I'm gonna push these up to about 150. See how it's just like blowing the living daylight out of the image. Uh, I'll probably nudge yellows up as well, maybe like 65-ish. Everything else I'm just going to leave at the default. 40, 60, 20, 80 looks great. So this is way overexposed, uh, but it's going to work for us. A couple things. We don't need the layer mask on this layer. We're going to create a fresh layer mask. So I'm just going to drag that to the garbage to get rid of it. It's going to say, are you sure you want to delete the layer mask? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, we want to apply some blending options to this black and white layer. Now you can also get to blending options by simply double clicking out here on the layer. And here is the blending options. Now here's what we're going to do. Right off the bat, we are going to try to pull some of those highlights through, but we're going to do it just by, I think we just need to split this anchor handle and pull this over maybe to like 215 or so let some of those highlights show through. We can't see a lot of them because the highlights are just that blown out. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is try to take the darks from this layer. So I'm going to split this handle and I'm going to drag this way over. So you can see um, I'm starting to kind of see the shadows of the lips a little bit better. So I'll pull this over to, I don't know, somewhere around like 150, 157 is what I landed on. I was doing 150, 160. That works for my image. It may be a little different with yours. The key is you just want to start to see kind of the shadows. See if I shut off before and after. See we're getting much more contrast in the lips. That's the key. The trick is to get the white color, but still maintain that texture and tone and contrast there in the lips. So now I'm going to open up and I'm going to have a link. There's a, a polka dot pattern. I have a link to it down in the description of this video. It's totally free to go download from a great, a great website called VectEasy. I'm going to go file open. It's a .eps file when you download it. Uh, here it is, 07-3.eps. I'm going to open that here in Photoshop, and it's going to say, all right, we got to rasterize this. A resolution of 300 gives me the size 5833 by 4083. That's going to work great for our image. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to open up this uh, this image. Now, we do have our credit down here designed by Vecteezy, and I love credits. I love giving people credit, but just for the sake of our color range here, I'm going to use my rectangular marquee tool, by the way. I didn't mention that. Grab the rectangular marquee tool, and we want to just drag a selection out over that and we want to fill this with black so go edit fill and we're going to fill it with contents black the reason we're going to do this and then i can just go select deselect by the way the reason we're going to do this is because we're going to go select color range and we're going to tell photoshop look uh just select the white dots see how they're all turning red that's because my selection preview by the way is set to quick mask but the red stuff is what's going to be selected um and in fact maybe that'd be a little tricky we can just go back to none here uh we click on one of the white dots and we get our little preview in here um so we're selecting all of those. You don't want to go too high with the fuzziness because it's going to start to select color. See how we're getting like that grayscale in there? Well, when I load up my, my zoom tool, it shows color, but we're getting that grayscale in there. That means some of that's going to be selected. That's bad. We don't want any of that. We just want the white. So right around 50, 55 for the fuzziness is beautiful. Hit OK. And then we're going to pop these circles up onto their own layer by hitting Command or Control J. And there we go. We've got those polka dots up on their own layer. Now, we're going to just click on this layer. And oh, I'm sorry. Now we're going to click on the layer. We're going to grab the Move tool. We're going to grab that layer. So now 
we're pulling these polka dots out and we're going to hover up over our lips document and I'm going to drop it on this document, right? Something kind of like that. And you can make the polka dots larger or smaller, whatever you want. You can scale them up, scale them down uh, by going edit free transform. And I'm holding down shift on my alt or option key. That's going to allow me to scale these down a little bit. I think I'm even going to rotate them a little bit. Maybe something, something kind of like that. That'll be cool, I think. I'm going to commit that change, something sort of like that. Now all I need to do is load this as a selection, but I think before I load it as a selection, um, I want to make the edges a little bit more like mixed up and messed up and a little wavy and maybe a little blurry. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go filter, distort, zigzag. Now you could also apply a displacement map, but it's a few extra steps and a displacement map in theory would be a little bit more perfect in terms of setting up this image. Um, but I think zigzag for, for what we're going for here will work just fine as well. Um, I'm going to go with pretty much what I have here, an amount of three or four, just to give the edges of our shape some kind of like, you know, they're not going to look perfect at all anymore and lots of ridges. We don't want this to be smooth at all. So we want as many ridges as we can get. And the style I chose is just pond ripples. That's good. Out from the center might work as well but pond ripples I think will be just a little bit better. I'm going to hit OK and you're going to see it's going to kind of just, just waggle them up a little bit and then we'll go filter, blur, Gaussian blur and we're going to blur this. I don't know that we'll quite go to. I'm going to go like 1.5. So just give it a little bit of blur on the edge as well. All right, great. Now what we can do, hit the little eyeball here, shut that layer off and now we can use that, uh, that polka dot layer. We can load it as a selection by command or control and clicking on the layer thumbnail. So we can command or control click there. Now we will select our black and white layer. So just click right on that layer and we go layer, layer mask, reveal selection. So that's going to fill black in everywhere else. Now this is kind of a problem, right? Because obviously the polka dots are extending onto the skin and, and off of the lips. So let's undo a couple times. Let's go edit, undo the layer mask. Before we create the layer mask, we want to save this selection, but we want to constrain the selection within the lips. Well, we can actually use the mask we've already created and force that to constrain this selection by holding down command shift option or control shift alt on the PC and click on that layer mask. And you're going to see it's going to trim away all the bits of selection that are outside of our lip area, i.e. the white area of that mask. Now with the black white layer, if we go layer, layer mask, reveal selection. Now we're just going to get all of those white polka dots over the lips. Now you might think we're done, but we're not. Probably at this point, you're going to want to go and tweak the edges. And notab uh, most notably, I'm looking at stuff like this right here. We just have a little bit of white floating on the edge, you know, over here on the edge. It just kind of looks bad, right? Right up over here. We're going to get rid of that stuff. So we're going to grab our brush tool and we're going to make sure our foreground color is set to black. If your foreground color is white, hit the letter D and then the letter X. It's going to just reset your, for your foreground background color and then flip your foreground and background color. We're painting with black and then I'm just going to paint over. Now I I'm able to make that disappear. I've selected the layer mask here on my black white adjustment layer. All right. So I've clicked on that layer mask and I'm painting with black on that mask. And then I can just paint away all the little bits that are just uh, quite frankly distracting. And what I can do beyond that is I can go in and just say like, you know what, that needs a little bit more blending there on the edge. And I can just gently paint away stuff that's just maybe sticking out a little bit too far. So just like that, we've made even more progress, but there's still more to be done. A couple things. Number one, the white is still blowing out our highlights way too much right there. Uh, but I think blend if can help solve some more problems. First and foremost, to help kind of fix some of this blowing out, let's double click on our black white layer once more to bring up those blending options. And I'm going to straight up reduce the layer opacity to like, I don't know, let's try 85%, right? There we go. That's helping kind of chill out those highlights a little bit. But I also think I want to expand the, the split point, maybe to like 180 or so here on this layer. Um, and I also think I want to show some of the shadows through from the underlying lips a little bit more. So I'm going to split the bottom underlying layer black point, uh, alt or option and click on that point. And I'm just going to boost this. See, if I boost it too much, it starts to make the polka dots disappear. So I'm just going to pull it up to like, I don't know, 25, 30, something like that. We can go quick before, after. Look at how much better all those white polka dots are blending. In fact, now that I see that, I might push the opacity back up to around 90. I'm still keeping an eye on the hottest hot spots here where the highlight is hitting the lip. And yeah, I think I really like that. So I'm just going to close my layer style. And that's pretty much it, right? We can just shut those layers off. There's before, there's after. Now, one of the really cool things about this is this is red and white, right? Red and white's kind of that classic polka dot. But what if you wanted to do like purple and white, right? Or pink and white, something like that. You could do that. And if, if the polka dots up here are a little bit dark, a couple 
couple things you can do. You can boost the brightness, but if that's messing you up too much, especially down here in the highlights, you would just go back up to the black white layer and you would blend those underlying shadows so we could split this and push this back a little bit, or we could push this one back as well. Yeah, there we go. That's probably a little bit more appropriate, the top one. We could push that back a little bit more, fill in the underside of that upper lip a little bit more. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit more just to make sure that we're getting the proper coverage. And just like that, we now have pink lips, right? Or you could go, whoops, wrong adjustment layer. Hue saturation is what I want. You could go blue. Now the blue is a little too dark. We could go yellow. There's all kinds of different things we could go um, and, and, and do lots and lots of different things. And by the way, when I go to like a yellow or a green, part of the reason that the, the polka dots are appearing darker is because on the black, white adjustment layer, remember we were changing the color of reds and yellows. You would need to boost like the color of greens and yellows a lot. So you can see there now we've got like a green and white polka dot lip. So like I said, lots and lots of different things that you can do. We could go with like a dark purple. And in this case, we need to go and boost the blues and the cyans and magentas and all of that. And we get a really cool, almost blue and silver type of polka dot effect. And oh, by the way, I should mention just quickly on the way out the door, see how this dot really should be a little, it, like it almost should be fading into the shadows a little bit more. If you have something like that, you can always grab your brush tool and I would recommend reducing the opacity of the brush tool. So knock it down to like, I don't know, 50 or so, something like that. And just go in there and paint over that part of the um, of the dot and just try to fade it in there a little bit. And if you need to bring back some of the uh, some of the dot, you know, by all means, go in and do what needs to be done. But a lot of times you can go in and you can just kind of help fade into like a crevice or a crack in the lips a little bit more if it needs to be in any particular area. Um, and yeah, just like that, you can go in and you can create many different colors and styles of polka dot lips. In fact, you could do it with any pattern that you darn well please, because as you see, once you figure it out, it's actually pretty simple. The magic lies in being able to blend those adjustment layers with the blend if sliders, which are insanely powerful when used in the correct application. So if you've enjoyed this video, again, please make sure you subscribe to this channel so you never miss any future Photoshop tutorials. And uh, yeah, for creating polka dot makeup lips in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.